Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is James Bonanno, and I am joined today by Camila Santander. Camila, welcome to Adobe Live. Hello, James. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the chat, Wade and Steve and gang. Uh, it's really nice to be back and to have two full days of Premiere Pro. Camila will be going over how to edit some really killer videos uh, for TikTok and her whole approach and technique. And we're going to get to learn a little bit about uh, who Camila is and what she does. But before we get started, uh, we got to just address a few housekeeping items. Uh, Katarina Vudovao, welcome to the chat, everyone. Uh, if you missed the previous stream, you can view the replay on Behance or YouTube. Uh, check out the replay of day one of designing a custom book cover with Casey Moses. Uh, check out the creative encores of the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Julia Vaca every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, right before this stream. And uh, tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each and every day. I myself have been dabbling in Illustrator, so these, uh, these challenges really do help. That being said, uh, Camila, why don't you take it away a little bit, introduce yourself to the chat, to the world of uh, Adobe Live here, and let us know uh, kind of what you're working on over the next two days. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I am Camila Santander. I am originally from Bolivia. I live in New York City. And the way uh, Adobe found me was through TikTok. I do Adobe tutorials. So you can see here, I do Premiere Pro tutorials, actually. And I also talk about um, creativity, uh, productivity tips. I'm, I'm going to be, be dabbing on mental health and kind of like challenging myself, getting out of my comfort zone. So I'm kind of like leaning into that um, uh, space of content but mostly I do content uh, Premiere Pro tutorials so if you can see here like I did kind of like I used to film my computer with my phone and now I kind of like do the video editing like it's better quality you can see here how it changed nice. um, other than that I do have a YouTube uh, channel which I started a while ago I did stop um, posting there because of at school it got so busy but i really want to get back on this so if you speak spanish follow me here it's everything is in spanish and Sweet. then on my instagram i post uh just personal stuff but if you want to connect with me maybe like uh, ask me a question i'm always very responsive there and then i have a website where you can see my work both academic work but also uh, my creative film work uh, this is a documentary i did for my masters and also this is a a short video I help editing and I also acted a little bit but I also have some other creative projects here and I like I said also my some of my academic work oh, so that's awesome. all about me perfect well thank you for sharing yeah and again those in the chat that are just joining us Steve Vudaval, Katarina, Corrado the whole gang uh, make sure to follow Camila as we continue the journey over the next two days uh, clearly your work is everywhere and you were mentioning right before the stream that you just you just recently graduated college and you're in or you just finished your graduate program is that right yes yes i so i did uh, my undergrad in tampa florida i did uh psychology and then for my master's i did women gender and sexuality studies but i really want to go into this more creative realm and maybe focus on issues about women gender mm -hmm. and all, all things uh, lgbtq plus feminism that, that's what i really care about love that love that yeah and i mean it's a it's a beautiful thing that you got to study that and you really like have a background in education and i think going into filmmaking in some fashion the world is really open uh to you know tell those stories so i'm really excited to kind of see where you take that and your journey is just getting started so uh, thank very you. very thank excited you. thank you so much yes awesome. i'm excited too yeah it's really it's uh it's a amazing world where we have so many mediums at our disposal to create compelling stories. And I think that's what's uh, amazing about TikTok as we segue into what you're creating uh, in this whole short form video that we have at our disposal with Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, you know, you name it. Um, and it's a different approach to, I think, storytelling. So, um, you know, with that being said, I will kind of let you have the floor, uh, Camila. And again, those in the chat that are new here, uh, if you are joining us for the first time, leave some uh, comments, some questions. I will be the uh, moderator for these next uh, two hours of this brilliant show we're about to, <laughs> to watch Camila put on. And uh, yeah, just uh, hop right in and, and I'll kind of feed you questions as they come in. Great, perfect. So I'm going to just tell you what we're going to be doing today. Maybe if we finish, if we don't finish, we'll continue tomorrow. If not, we'll continue another video tomorrow. But I'm going to be doing a kind of a vlog 
about my day by myself in New York City. I usually do stuff, I always do stuff with people, so I wanted to do something that is by myself. I'm really trying to like kind of get out of my comfort zone and just uh, try to like learn more about myself. I think I'm at that stage of my life that I have to learn more about myself. And tomorrow I'm gonna do a nighttime routine. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna first uh, kind of like show I guess I'm gonna create a new sequence, show the, show you how to do that. Then I'm gonna show you all my talking videos. We're gonna go through them. I, th I think you can see a little bit here. Like that's all me talking. And then we're gonna go through my B-roll and kind of put that on top of that and kind of make it work. Uh, I'm gonna add some locations to the places I've been to. I'm gonna put music Sweet. and then color. So awesome. let's get started. Cool, cool. Did I see a little Harry Potter action in there? Was that you did see that? Oh my god! <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> I was so bad. I've I've seen all the movies, but I started I started reading the books, and then I when I was younger, and then I didn't have the patience, and I kind of want to go back and read them now you because they're so back. good. You really should. They're amazing. I love Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're really good. This is like my tenth time reading them. Oh wow! Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're dedicated. <laughs> I am. I love Harry Potter. Okay, uh, well, I guess I'm going to create a new sequence. I'm going to show a little bit of how I edit that first. And then because that would take forever, I'm just gonna, we're going to come back to this one that is kind of done already. So cool. I go to file new sequence. And for I have this kind of like here already use this one. Uh, a R R I. Uh, yeah, it's Ari. It's, Ari, a, yes. it's like a, a cinema say. camera setup. Yeah. Okay, so I use that one usually. Um, and then for settings, because it's TikTok, it's the same settings, but you just change the, the frame size. So it's like, instead of being 1920 by 1080, you do the opposite. 1080 by 1920. And we're gonna put this a day in New York City, Neo. It's amazing how much more often now I'm using those frame sizes as opposed to what I used to use when I was mm -hmm. in film school and create, I mean, I'm still using obviously landscape 16 by nine, but again, like I mentioned, because of TikTok and Instagram, like that's that nine by 16 format is, is key. Yeah. It's so, um, like that's what everyone's doing now, social media, right? Yeah. But I really like YouTube. Like there's something about YouTube that is so yeah. nice and different, but okay. So here's my introduction. I really like to watch it here first and then like kind of bring it uh, to the uh, sequence. So I just finished working for the day and it's a little bit earlier than I was expecting initially. So I thought I would just take myself on a cute little date. I always wanted to do something that I do just by myself. Like I feel like, I feel like if I don't go with someone else, I just don't go at all but I've really been trying to get out of my comfort zone and just do things that I enjoy just for myself. So so I think I'm getting starting to get like a little bit repetitive here. So we're just gonna bring what I have here. So I'm gonna create like an outro because the intro is gonna be where the video starts. I'm gonna drag this to my timeline. And I always put like keep existing settings so the sequence settings don't change. And right. because the video quality is a lot larger, I want this to make like the video to be smaller. So I'm gonna go right click and set to frame size and that's like just does it by yourself like you don't have to and did it. you did you shoot this on uh your cell phone or were you shooting this on a camera yeah no i did shoot everything on my cell phone cool yeah actually i was um i learned the hard way um because i was using my headphones to shoot on the street and you could see like you could hear like the noise of my hair and everything mm. so i really need to change that but like this is new for me too like just doing vlogs outside so it's a learning That's, process for everyone. Oh, absolutely. And what a, what yeah. a great way to almost like, I think the beauty of vlogging too, um, is that you can almost give yourself a challenge. And like you said, you're getting out of your comfort zone. And if you're not with somebody else, you may not do it. So you're challenging yourself to go out and shoot a vlog. And I think the more and more you do that, like you learn along the way and, and you just get better and better at it. Yeah, definitely. It's really like hard to talk outside. Like in the streets to talk to the camera. I was pretending I was on FaceTime the whole time <laughs> because I could not do it. Like I, I was like so afraid. But anyway, I like to put my sound a little bit larger, like you can see here, just so I can see where I start talking and stop talking. So I just don't cut myself. Right. It really helps me. So here, um, this is like a little a little trick I have. If I want to get rid of like the, the first part, 
like this instead of just cutting and then like erasing the thing i just press q and it does that by itself so it's really nice i think like premiere has so many like shortcuts mm -hmm. they're so cool like to use so. so i just finished working for the day and it's a little bit earlier than i was expecting it. so i don't think i'm gonna say that because when I was trying to edit before, I realized the whole thing is like half an hour, so I really need to cut on time. Right. Um, TikTok allows for up to three minute videos, so keep that always in mind, because uh, I guess like that's something about like our generation and social media, like you want people don't really uh, hold attention for so long. Yep. Yeah, that's and that's tough. That's difficult because you can be very there's things that you want to say, especially in a vlog that you want to get across, but mm -hmm. you have to basically capture someone's attention in that first, you know, second or two. Two is probably exactly. even too long because there's mm -hmm. so much out there. Um, we have a question from Mervin actually in the chat, Camila. Mm -hmm. Uh he wanted to know, or Mervin wanted to know how you rectify camera shakes while editing. So if you have some shakiness, what do you do about that? Yes. So for shakiness, we I do have a lot of shakiness actually. Actually, and I just use effects, and we can. I can show you here. Actually, let me bring some. Um, I guess this one could work. Um, we're just gonna mute it because we don't need to. Hmm. So here I have a small little sequence. I mean, video, and I don't think it's too shake. Like it's not shaking much, but I'll show you what I do. I go into effects, and there's an effect for this as well. Warp and warp stabilizer. The magic, the, the magic, magic button. It's amazing. Yeah. It but is. I always put it like to 10, 20% because I feel like when it's 50, it's like over that, like it's too much. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I like wait for that to go and do its thing. And then it's good. It works now. Uh, I think it's going to take a little bit to actually. Uh, analyze and do the whole thing so we can go back to the editing but yeah if you want to go into like, stabilize any footage that's an effect warp stabilizer yeah and so and and mervin that's a that's a good question too that's a that's a effect i use a lot on on even clips that i may not think i initially planned to use it on like it was pretty fairly mm -hmm. steady or i wanted it to have a little bit of handheld shakiness to it and when you have that smoothness to 50 percent the edging of a clip ends up doing exactly what it says. It like warps the whole mm -hmm. clip. So you may, uh, Mervin, if you're doing that, find that it's a little confusing. So that smoothness that uh, Camila was referencing there, just start to play with that and find a, a place that smooths it out enough where it's not distracting, but it doesn't make your, your clip look yeah. super wonky. Yeah, it doesn't deform your clip because it can do that, definitely. Um, so let's play it. Let's see if it works. Oh, look at that. See yeah. what happened? Yeah. I think that's just, it's not going to play like that the whole time. Sometimes it does that um, with like a, under that method or that framing, like the stabilize crop auto scale, you can sort of move mm. between those and decide that, okay, I just want to stabilize it. I just want to crop it, or I just want to do that. And what happens with Premiere is they're stabilizing and cropping the two at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they'll find, it's a little wonky sometimes. Maybe but, nest it first, nest yeah, and then yeah. stabilize. Yeah. Okay, so that would be nest and then stabilize if you're changing the size. Yeah, you're right, totally. But thanks cool. for good. your question. Yeah, good question. Keep them coming. Actually, we have we have one in here from uh, Navido, and you might get you might be getting to some of these, Camila. So again, if you've planned on going through this, uh, we can address those later. Um, but uh, Navido wants to know how to import the trendy sounds uh, to edit with them, then upload to TikTok. I'm guessing, Navido, you're talking about the sounds. Uh, from TikTok, are you, do you do you take those and import those into Premiere, or do you export a video and then attach that track onto it in TikTok? So what I did, I usually do work with clients. I do social media uh, video editing uh, as a freelance. What I do for clients is that the sound they want, I download the video that has a sound for the longest time. Because sometimes you have to match frame like the times to the video and it's harder to do on the app. So I just download one video, I remove the audio, I put it on Premiere and I edit on top of the audio. And then when I upload it to TikTok, I make sure I take, uh, you know, you can use a sound. I put use sound and I put the original sound up to like 200% and the added sound, I put it to 0%. So mm -hmm. you still get like the algorithm of like getting the sound, but you have edited with the sound on, on Premiere. Gotcha. So okay, I, I do that, it's kind of like, 
Yeah, um, it's a little hack. I guess like my way, but yeah, it's nothing crazy. I just download one video, like a random video I find. Cool. But that's that's a good mm -hmm. point though, because you want to make sure that you're in the algorithm on TikTok Definitely. to pick get picked up on a trendy track. And if you hear a song and you're like, okay, I want to make a video to this, that's a really good way to do it, but still keep your editing uh, concise in Premiere. So that's that's a very, very interesting hack there. Exactly, thanks. Um, so let's keep watching. Do it just by myself, like I feel like. Okay, so when I say by myself, I kind of want to cut it here. And like I said, like I kind of look at this uh, waves of sound, so I just don't cut myself right in the middle of a sentence. So here it looks like I kind of stopped talking, so we're gonna remove this part. Like I feel like, I feel like if I don't go. Uh, I like that when I say if I don't go by myself, I do, just don't go at all. So I think here's a good place. I'm just gonna erase that. Vlogging really teaches you how to, um, and I've kind of learned this from vlogging for the last couple of years, it really teaches you how many times you say like, uh, or um, or uh, and all of those things when you trim them out, create something that actually sounds very informative. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> I go, I'm like, what am I saying? You know, so you don't realize how much you can actually trim out um, to, you know, shorten a time of a vlog if you had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Like when I started doing videos for, um, I'm just saying it again, um, uh, for YouTube, I would trim like half an hour of me talking to like eight minutes. Right. So it really does teach you like how much you say you like and all that stuff, true. So I think I'm just gonna cut it here and then remove this. So already I, well, if I, I have 18 seconds, so that's a lot of time, I think, for just an introduction, but I guess we can do the whole thing. And then I always like to go back and see what I need, what I don't need anymore. So we're just gonna keep going. Then and I have, and a I, have a I have a question about mm -hmm. your organizing here too. Of course. Um, for those that are, you know, pretty new to Premiere, it seems like there's a few in the chat that um, have maybe come from Final Cut and they're they're not on Premiere. How do you go about organizing those bins? Cause it does look like you're very organized in, in terms of what footage you have in there. Yes, of course. So I have um, each bin is kind of like one thing I did. So here you can see like my outfit change. I have one video for each outfit. Uh, well, one thing I did for the outfit change. And one thing I did for each bin is add a color. So every like part of the video has a different label, which is a different color. So here, like you can see this, that's a label. So when you put it on your uh, on your sequence, like here you can see, everything has a different color. So I kind of, I can see what is going on and I can organize myself better with like the visual colors. I think that, well, everything about Premiere is more visual. So it really helps like labeling everything. And to label, uh, you can, for example, go here, you grab all your clips, right click, label, and then you have all the colors here. I don't want to change it because I don't don't know the names. They have like some random names like Caribbean. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> but you can label them. And also you can always label them also on your sequence. Same thing. A label. And there you go. You have the colors here. Yeah, and it's, so that's a nice that's a nice way to keep things keep things organized, especially mm -hmm. as a visual as a visual medium here. It's important to to kind of see what you're working on and know um, that's not just one you know, one massive color and a bit of a mess. Exactly, definitely. Then, well, I have, this is for this video. So I think like it really depends on what you're working on that you have to make it work for yourself. Right. Um, so that's me for my New York City uh, video, but then I have some sounds here. So I did a folder with sounds. And I have the sounds we're gonna add later here. And then for my other nighttime routine, I have my footage here and it's all labeled. Like you can see step one, Actually, let me organize it by, by name. Step one, step two, step two B, step two C, because I did like different cameras. We'll see that tomorrow. Mm. It's step C. And then I'm, I think I'm going to label each step by colors, but I didn't organize this into folders because I didn't think it was necessary. Uh, it's kind of different because the other one, this one needs like the labels to organize because it's like a step, step, step. But the other one was kind of me improvising and filming all around me. So I didn't, I couldn't really like label each. Right. video so right. it, like i said it really depends on what you're working on and then i have my voice recordings with the steps here like you can see cool and i am gonna organize those tomorrow and yeah that's about it i like 
folders i like colors like do everything you can keep it organized because if it's disorganized yeah. it really messes up your life <clears throat> agreed agreed and it's mm -hmm. just it's important to get into the habit i feel like anytime we do a stream here uh all about premiere whether it's TikTok, whether it's youtube any video that you're creating uh that organization I, it may not be the most interesting thing to talk about but <clears throat> excuse me uh but it is really important to do you know it is important yes. to keep your keep yourself in check and Definitely. uh because the more you add to this timeline the the more out of control it gets if you don't do that so yes and also like if you want to find things if you lose something it's always nice to like go back and see that you actually did a good job at first sometimes like i used to get so lazy into organizing that i would just not but then i would regret it so much if like a client needed like something to be changed or like can you add this little thing that is i would be like oh my god where is that so it was just it was so much about you learn, like you live and learn. And I learned the hard way. Yep. Um, okay. One other, one other question, uh, mm -hmm. Camila, when, uh, while we're on this topic, so this is a little more rudimentary again, but can, uh, John has a question in the chat, how you get your footage from your phone, uh, and into premiere pro. Uh, well, I just, if it's not a long footage, if it's something like easy to send through air, air airdrop, I'll send it yep. through airdrop because I have an an iPhone and also a MacBook. So they work really nicely together. Or I just learned this yesterday. I just plug in and there's like this app actually you can use. It's not an app, it's like image something. I forgot, I learned it yesterday, but you can also export it from your phone there. Something that my mom does that she doesn't have a MacBook to export her videos, she uploads them to Google Drive from her phone to Google Drive and from Google Drive to her computer. So okay. that you could also do that. So there's many ways, but yeah. I think that AirDrop is my favorite. Yeah, I would say AirDrop too, um, even more than Google Drive is probably better if you can avoid it. Um, John, great question because Google Drive uh, or any like Dropbox, uh, although it is good to upload those finished products in there, um, it'll compress your clips ever so slightly because mm. Google, you know, does what it does. Um, mm -hmm. So anytime you can like remove the middle, middle third, like third party, uh, folder, you you're going to not get a compressed, uh, file. So yes. I, I had just learned that not that long ago. And I've been, I've been doing that for a long time too. So, uh, airdrop is, is definitely better. But, um, I'm making a note of that. So tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out what was the app I was talking about for exporting and I'm gonna update you guys tomorrow. Cool. Can we do that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Great. So right. I think that if I keep going with everything I recorded, it's going to take forever. So I did my work beforehand. I did my homework. So I kind of like cut all the parts where I talk and it's here. So we're going to continue here. Uh, I think that's a good idea now. So I go to my outfit change. So what I did for the outfit, I kind of film a little bit of myself with the outfit like that. And then I add something else. With my shoes and then I add my jacket and then I add my bag. So I wanted that to be really fast, like that, that, that. Cool. And uh, we don't have sound like a music music yet, but I think it will work. So I think here I'm already changed. So I want to move this like all these clips a little bit like to the back so I can work on my outfit change and then like adjust it. So what I'm gonna do is press A. And when you press A you can like click and then you like grab all these clips and you can always like work with them which is really neat. I like that. So you don't have to yeah. go like this. Yeah, it that's works. a great, that's a great mm -hmm. tool there. Yep. Okay. So I am going to just have like a really like one sec of this. So um, maybe that might be too long. I don't want the sound. So I'm just going to drag the video here and then do the same for each of the change. I want to make sure like Okay, so I think like just at the beginning, I have like kind of the same frame with the whole mirror here. And so, so your idea, your idea here is to sort of jump cut between those. Mm -hmm. So it just looks mm -hmm. like the, the outfit has just changed by you standing there, right? Exactly. Cool. I think I'm going to put them one on top of each other, just so then I can have the same time for each. And then I'm going to move them. Oh yeah, Wade. That's a that's a good point. Wade in the chat said that you can also email yourself a file from uh, WeTransfer, which that oh, nice. I I believe that actually. Yeah, Wade said, but who uses email? Um, I know <laughs> it's it's a thing of the past, although it's still very useful. So 
yeah, we transfer is another, another good option for that. And it doesn't lower your quality. No, that one's a little different because you're uploading for some reason. I don't know why that's different. Um, if anyone in the chat knows why some of these other places you upload them to like, you know, cloud servers, uh, compress them. And again, it might be like a subtle compression. It might be just enough for, for nerds like me to know that my <laughs> okay. clip is not quite as crispy as I'd like, but, um, there's multiple ways. Yeah. There's always a way. If there's a will, there's a way. Right. Okay. So one thing I do to cut all these videos, you know, you can just see, but if you put shift, you're going to cut all of them instead of just one by one. So that's really nice. And someone in the chat had mentioned earlier, I don't know who it is, that said they were coming over from Final Cut. Uh, let's see, yeah, Mervin, it looks like. Uh, I actually had started on Final Cut years ago uh, when I was in school and when I was in high school, actually, I started editing on Final Cut. And when I moved over to Premiere, I was a little hesitant to start editing in Premiere because I didn't know all the buttons, I didn't know the tools. So there is actually a keyboard shortcut, like layouts uh, in Premiere that are the old legacy Final Cut. So if you're, um, you know, Mervin, if you're looking to maybe like wean yourself off of Final Cut into Premiere, uh, there are keyboard shortcuts to do that. So um, while you were talking about keyboard shortcuts, I thought I'd throw that in there. Great. Um, okay, so now I kind of want to show my bag. And this is a thing I tried to do. So I got creative with the filming here. I had myself and myself only for this video. So I want it to look kind of like, um, what do you say when like things move like by themselves and it's like tick, tick, tick. Oh, like a stop, like stop motion? Stop motion, yes. I want it to look kind of like stop motion, stop motion cool. kind of thing here. But instead of just taking pictures, because the tripod was struggling, I decided to take a video and clap every time it was a picture. So we're going to guide ourselves by the claps. Sweet. So I really need the sound here. Oh my God, that's a long video. Okay. I'm just gonna work with what we have here. Let's see. Yeah. So I think that's a clap you can see here, like the right. little sound. Yeah, that's a clap. So let me first adjust this to the size. There you go. Yeah, those okay. are always very, always very helpful to have that visual or that audio cue. Mm -hmm. Or else you'd be yes. scrub scrubbing through five minutes. You're like, what am I looking for here? <laughs> exactly. I think I'm just, we, we can see the audio, so I'm going to mute it so we don't hear the claps because that can be a little bit overwhelming for our ears. So as for stop motion, do you think I should put like one frame for each or like two frames, two frames, two frames? Um, I guess it depends on how many things you pan sort of around. I would always, I don't know, try maybe one frame because it's, it moves pretty quickly. Um, I guess yeah. it depends on sort of the difference of frame to frame. Mm -hmm. If there's there's a substantial difference that, between each, then one frame is probably good. Okay. Yeah. You're right. But, so maybe you yeah. can see here me like yes, yeah, I'm moving the things around, getting really creative, and here's another clap. So. Um, John had there. another another question in the chat about a keyboard shortcut to make all the timeline zoom out to fit and show the timeline. And on a Mac, I believe it's command plus and command minus, and that'll actually just zoom everything in and out. But then you can actually do what Camila is doing here and expand each um, each track. And I believe it's like option plus or command plus will expand yeah. ev everything up and down. So that's helpful too. So you mean like to make everything like the whole sequence fit? Like yeah, fit you... into, I think that it's actually the, the little thing that is like this. And it shows everything. Yep. So there's yep. the one below delete. Got it. And when I do command plus, that's for the video and option plus or minus, that's for the audio. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are those are I feel like I'm constantly like command S to save everything and then just those tools. Talking about that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've had my computer be so like I I was doing this work for this client and it was taking me this whole like the whole morning to to work on that and then my computer decided to like oh i'm gonna die bye oh uh, no and it did not save and i uh, cried like for a yeah. whole day just yeah, i did not cry but you know it was tragic it is very tragic and unfortunately it teaches 
every editor a lesson of command Sing. Just save it like 50 mm -hmm. times because at some point we love Premiere, but <laughs> love Premiere. it might, it might crash. So you just gotta hedge your bets. Yeah, that was not the best moment in my career, but I, I, I don't know what, do you see it? What happened here? Oh, never mind. It's just a little bit thing. Um, but yeah, after that, I was like saving like constantly. And I, I would be like on YouTube and I would like command S like I'd be doing yeah. anything on my computer command S and then I kind of like got out of the habit that I need to get back on that. Um, as you keep going here, Camila, yes. we have another, uh, chat is, is very active today, which is great. Keep yes. those questions coming. Uh, Mervin, I'm sorry. We're getting to your question here. Um, how do you fade out music at the end of a clip? Do you use keyframes? Yes, I use keyframes or if I'm feeling lazy, I'm just going to add the, the effect. You can always just go to the end and I apply it, apply default transitions and it's going to yeah. do it for you like that appears. But I like to use keyframes. Yeah. Uh, maybe when I, we get to the audio part, I'm going to sure. show how to use the keyframes for audio too. But I like keyframes. Yeah, me too. It's uh, just gives you a little more control, I think. Exactly. Harry Potter. Oh my God. <laughs> so you've yeah, read that book funny. 10 times? Probably like not 10, <laughs> but like seven. This might, might be like the seventh time. Yeah. But that's wow. a lot, like that's a lot, a lot of times. So 10 seems like pretty accurate. Yeah. I don't think I've read any book more than, you know, two or three times. And okay. uh, Harry, Harry Potter, especially. I mean, yeah, mm. you're, you're a fan. Anyone else a fan in the chat? Harry Potter fans? Let's give some love. Yeah, I think that I don't know that like it feels like home. It feels like cozy. You know, it's mm -hmm. like watching your favorite movie. But I go, <laughs> I read the whole book, like the whole collection <laughs> again. So That's I just great. started. I was like talking myself out of reading them, and then I talked to my therapist, and she's like, "Why not? Like, if you want to, like, yeah. what's wrong with that? You can read more than one book at the same time, which I yeah. do. So I, I was like, do. Yeah, why not? Like, why not? You're right." It is yeah, reading is such a such a meditative uh, thing to do. And what uh, do you have any other favorite books right now that you're reading or that you have read? Yeah, so I think well, it depends for self help. I really like the power of now. Mm. That's such an like an amazing book, a, a book I'm just finished reading with my best friend. I don't know if you're watching this, Sarah, but hello, I love you. Uh, we what we were reading the four agreements such okay. an amazing book i think if i would recommend one book would be like the four agreements i'm in my 20s so uh the defining decade for people in your 20s that's also like an amazing read great um if you like more stories i just finished reading it ends with us by colin hoover okay love that book as well and then the seven husbands of evelyn Hugo. that's that's a newer book but that's a, a good book too let's see if this worked Sweet. I Look love at that. That, that was How about so that? fun. I, I, That's that was great. Really cool. I got so I love excited. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think I, sorry, you were saying. Well, no, I think the one frame definitely works because it's, mm -hmm. it's just enough where I think people would want to watch it over and over again because they're enticed to know how you did it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's probably a good tactic as well. And it just, it looks really creative and cool. Amazing. I'm so happy it worked. Um, let's keep watching. So I think here I talk about just me read all good and ready to go. Um, I don't know if I'll talk to the camera in public. I might just pretend I'm on FaceTime. We'll see. But yeah, let's go. Okay, so we'll keep that for now. And then we'll see if we don't need that anymore because, you know, time. But yeah, so I don't need to say but yeah, that's unnecessary. And same thing like I showed before, if you want to cut the beginning of your clip, and keep the rest you can press q but if you want to cut the end of your clip you can press w so there you go so let's see what happens here so i just got my food okay so i just got my food so on my way to get food i wanted to show kind of like a little bit of what i'm doing so i'm just gonna move all these clips back and then we're gonna show what i have here so this is me walking. We don't need a lot of this, but we're gonna put maybe like one sec, like half a sec, or like where I'm going and moving. Let's see. 
I also I feel I don't need like the sound here, so yeah. we're just gonna put the video. And for some reason, I feel like in editing too, like the power of threes have always been a been a thing. So even in TikTok, like I find for steps or anything that has some pattern to it, I try to subtly like okay, like three steps because it just feels like it fits with the the power of everything else. That was sort of a a film school technique that has carried on, and of course that can be broken, but for some reason that seems to always stick with me. You know, I never knew that, but I love learning more about film. That's so cool. I'm going to say you think that. So like one, two. Yeah, like three. one, two, three. And then, okay. you know, and then so and like watch other vlogs and, and sort of pick up on that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. it's used a lot and you don't even realize it. Um, and it gives you a bit of like a, a formula when you're when you're editing stuff that like how many steps do I want to include here? Mm -hmm. What feels right? So three, three tends to work. That's so cool. Thank you so much for teaching me that. I'm yeah. going to use that now. You see everything on trees now. Okay, so I'm in the bus. I was really hesitant to like film <laughs> here because there was like this lady who was not happy with me for a part, for some reason next to me. But I think like she, she left and I was happy reading my book. So we can put this. This is more happy, happy times. Harry Potter, no release. Not too long. That's good. So we show that. And then I get to my food place. I'm really happy because I got my food. What did you get to eat? I was like curious the whole time. Dumplings. Oh, um, oh have you goodness. been to Vanessa's dumpling house? No, in I have Chinatown. not. You have to, you must go there. It's such What's a it good called? place. Vanessa's? Vanessa's dumpling house, yeah. Okay, I have I'll been to yeah. I have been to a couple of places in Chinatown for dumplings. Mm -hmm. So it might've been that, but uh, if you're talking about it like that, I need to check it out because it, Sounds it's amazing. so good. Yes, and get this first thing on the menu. It's like pan fried pork and shite, I think it's called. Like, okay. I actually, on this video, I got it twice, like for lunch and dinner. So we'll explore that together. But they're so good. I love them. Mm. So I yeah. just got my food. I'm going to go to the pier to eat it. And yeah, I'm really excited for that. So I'm just walking there. So maybe the last part is not very necessary to say but we'll keep it for now um same thing while i walk here i have my i get my food let's see that oh okay so i show me getting there so i think i'm gonna put that here before i talk because i say i just got my food so this is just a random video of chinatown maybe let's see i can start here the, that cute man with his back. Yeah, I know. I like that too. <laughs> and we're going to end it here. So like really short. And then, and quite, sorry. I have a question for you as you, as you keep doing this, uh, Camila, like, so for, uh, just a regular day in the life log like this, do, does thought go into like, do you plan out exactly what you want to go shoot? Or are you just taking, taking your phone and then like letting the world sort of unfold for you? Or how does that work? So I'm a planner. I like to plan everything. If not, I get like super anxious. I'm like, I need to plan. So for this day, I kind of had like an idea in my head of where I'm going to go, where I'm going to eat and everything. But also I try to like be surprised by what the world brings to me. But I guess like I would like to do more improvised vlogs in the future. Just this one was very planned. Also because I wanted to do it like nice and planned just for, you know, to be here and have something to show that is nice. I think this all these clips are like zoomed in. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that one's good. Yeah, this one's good. So we're gonna change this one. We could do what I showed, but I usually like also copy the motion and then paste it. So this all should be good now. Perfect. So see, you can see here that's Vanessa's dumpling house. Oh yeah, I have not been there, but it looks amazing. It is amazing, like. They're, they're really good. Recommended 100%. Can't because go wrong I, with Chinatown. Yes, Chinatown has the best food. I love going to Chinatown to eat. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Okay, so on my way to the pier, I also filmed a little bit, but I think I want to make this like clips more concise, kind of like the same size each, like all of them the same size and make them shorter so we don't take a long time. Well, I only have five now that I realize, but still, so we're going to make them short and kind of the same, the same time. So this, 
I really love those buildings in New York. Oh, I know. Yeah, New so York, cute. it's just, I, what I love about New York and, and now that you've lived there for a few years, like you absolutely would agree with me is just, you can, it's so walkable and you can just always experience something new just by leaving your building and walking around. And so I think it's really cool that you just did a little bit of a day in the life in the city. And, you know, for any of those in the chat that are in another city, New York city, uh, it's a really good exercise. And like you said earlier, getting out of your comfort zone, but also just practicing some of your creativity with what you have, which is a cell phone, you know, like not everybody yes. has access to a, a cinema camera and you don't need it. You can, you know, you can create a really cool little, little vlog just with your phone, which I love. Yeah, exactly. I think that um, sometimes we stop ourselves to do like stuff we really want, maybe because we don't have the like right resources or right camera. But I mean, as long as you do it, I think it works. And then you keep getting better and like upgrading. Like before yeah. this, I used to have like a MacBook Air and it was so slow. And I lost so much like stuff there because like it would just crash and like lose everything I edited. But I was doing it with my MacBook like my MacBook Air because I really wanted to like learn how to edit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, now I upgraded because I did work from that. Like I learned and then I started freelancing, saved some money and then here I am like with my MacBook Pro. <laughs> hey, that's that's a great, that's a great story. And it's certainly, I, I do think that it's easy for people to make excuses because you don't have the right gear. Oh, I can't go out and film a vlog today because I don't have a Sony or I don't have a Canon. I don't have... No, you just have, you use what you have. And, mm -hmm. and I think you create something based on what you feel passionate about to create. And even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, again, that's how you push through these things exactly. and how you learn and how you're in here teaching it. So I think that's, exactly. you're taking huge steps forward. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I saw this video of this YouTuber and she was like, I really want, like, I was so cold to like film this video, but I don't have any of my materials. So she filmed in Zoom. So she got mm. into Zoom. And then she like press like record screen, something like that, uh, record chat, whatever. And then she filmed on Zoom. And I was like, wow, like if you really want to make it happen, you will. Yeah, yeah, so that's absolutely. something to learn like for everyone. So, okay, I think I got to the pier now and then I'm going to show the food and my book again. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of Harry Potter. Harry Potter, if you're seeing this, will sponsor us. I was just going to say this stream is <laughs> sponsored by the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, they really should, right? <laughs> We're really here, like using what a pe what pier is this that's a beautiful pier is that in brooklyn or is that uh that's pier let me see i have my notes here that's pier 35. oh on like, the east side yes on the east side oh, it's so cool. beautiful like i saw it on tiktok and i really wanted to go to see if it was pretty and it really was like 100 yeah. percent. you'll see the view here mm. i think i talk here i was so focused on looking what is in front of me that i kind of missed this amazing, beautiful view. Look at this building. Yeah, so I was like looking at like everything that I could see like in front of me. And then I was like, oh my God, like I turn and I see that whole like the city and the bridge. And I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. But I don't think I'm gonna say, click keep that on my video. So we're just gonna keep the, the actual video, not me talking. Mm, yeah, maybe that's good enough. Did you feel like um, after you got out and you started filming a little more, you felt a little less uncomfortable in front of the camera or did that sort of carry throughout the whole whole day of filming? I think it did carry throughout the whole day of filming, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, I pretended I was on FaceTime. And every time I talked to the camera, I was on FaceTime. <laughs> and I would say like, hi, and then I would say like, bye. Uh, just so like just to like know. add that in there <laughs> yeah i think some videos you can actually hear me saying hi that's so funny yeah <laughs> so it's 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 a little awkward to be honest when you're first is. starting out you can see the dumplings there i think i'm just gonna uh, put that just a little wow bit. they're really good and you know what they didn't give me chopsticks they gave me they gave me a fork oh man <laughs> yeah i was like okay i guess this will work they're like not very authentic, but they're going to be tasty regardless. They were really tasty. So that's me eating. We don't have to watch that. Um, Val um, has, Voodoo Val has a question about mm -hmm. feeling comfortable in front of the camera. Um, and I, I guess I can speak to that a little bit. And then, um, and then Camila, if you want to, if you want to speak to anything that you did to, to help, I mean, I think the FaceTime thing is a really great technique to, to sort of make yourself feel like other people aren't watching mm -hmm. you. Um, 
but yeah, I think uh, that's a great question, Val. I've, uh, I've been, I started vlogging a couple years ago and, and I felt the same way that you did Camila, where you're just awkward. And I was holding, um, like a big gorilla pod and this huge camera. And so people were, were staring noticeably and I had to try to figure out, okay, like I just need to get over this, what I want to do here. And I think now, because so many more people are doing it, it's become a little more common. Um, and so not as many people stare at you when you're walking around talking. Um, and I think the first year I was vlogging it, everything, I look back on like old videos and I cringe cause I'm like, Oh man, it, it just comes off awkward because I felt awkward on camera. Um, and now I find myself vlogging like through a hotel or, or through an mm -hmm. airport or something and people are staring and I sort of just like, you know, that old saying where they say, if you're nervous on stage, just imagine people in their underwear at the back <laughs> of the room. I don't know why people said that, but like that was a thing. And so now, uh, vlogging wise, I try to just tu like, tune it out or include people in it if they're comfortable being on camera. And, uh, again, it's like we said, it's just practice, just doing it a lot. Mm -hmm. So what was the question? I don't think I... Val, Val had asked uh, if you had any techniques for uh, mm. feeling comfortable on camera when you're doing this. Yeah, I think that, like you said, like practice makes it better. Like the more you do it, the less weird it feels. Yeah. You just need to get there. But I think like also just when I was doing YouTube at first or like even TikTok, I would feel so awkward. I was in my room by myself, but still like filming yourself can be awkward, but the more you yeah. do it, the, like, then you just get so like, it's so easy to just grab the camera and film yourself. Right. So do it. Like if you want to, and I, I remember I started with this. So I guess this would be a good tip. Film yourself without like, you don't have to post it. You don't have to do anything. Just get like used to being in front of the camera. And then the more you do it, like we all said, it gets better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have, I have one other tip too, Val, and, and then Camila's going to continue doing this edit, but I find that moving around helps me a lot, like not standing in place or like not having it on a tripod and just looking into the camera. So in a place like New York, everything around you is so scenic that moving with your camera, or your phone keeps you loose, keeps you a little bit, um, higher energy. And it helps to, I think, make it feel less, um, less tense. So Lot, those little things definitely help. Great. So moving, you said that that seems like a good tip. Yeah, not like a crazy person, but I think just just walking, <laughs> just moving, just kind of mm -hmm. in a, being in a natural environment um, where you're not feeling like oh, I'm not. This is not something I would normally do. Uh, definitely helps. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. And now you can see here, like there were swings at the park. So you oh, can see like that's the whole cool. city. That, that was so pretty. Wow. I want to put that part. And I think I already showed more of the city before, so I'm not going to show that again, just for time's sake. But I always do this. Like if I want to keep them all at the same time, I'm going to put them on top of each other. Hmm. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so I don't know why I filmed the same thing twice. I think it was because I like this one better than the, the other one. So I'm just going to honor myself and actually use this one. Out. what a cool cool park though I, like i've never even been over that way and uh i feel like new york is really stepping their game up with some green spaces and just mm -hmm. places for people to hang out especially after covid everyone just wanted to get outside yeah no it was such a cool park you must go there it's so pretty and there was not a lot of people like you would think it'd be packed but it was really not like they had places to sit, like where I like sat to eat. They had yeah. like a little table and everything, like for a lot oh, of people wow. up there. And then I took kind of like the walk through the, I guess that's the river, the ocean. But like I walked through like through the whole part, like the whole down part of mm. the city. I didn't know you could walk that, but apparently you can. So that was really pretty. Very cool. Yes, it's nice to like go on adventure. It is. It's a good place to adventure. It really, you can spend, I mean, and if you have some nice, uh, running shoes on or some comfortable shoes, you can, you can walk the whole city. It's going to take you a while, but man, do you learn, you learn a lot about, about how cool New York is. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Mervin, Mervin has a question for you, Camila. Um, have you ever shot a clip in landscape and while editing realized that it should have been shot in portrait and tried to adjust the landscape view in portrait? Yes, I think that's 
super common actually and i actually have a lot of clients who are like can you transform this landscape video into like social media format and usually if it's possible i'll just zoom in to the best part and just keep it there maybe like use keyframes to like move it around if it's necessary if not i will do the thing whatever like i guess maybe you'll have a better answer for this james but um I put it like smaller, I kind of make it fit, and then I make one behind it blurry, which is kind yep. of the same video but blurry in the background. Um, I, use, I do that if it doesn't fit, but I think you've seen that everywhere. Like, I think that's like software that can do that, like yeah. apps. Yep. Well, I think a lot of Facebook videos that you see do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's a great technique too. I think, um, I think again, it all depends, uh, Mervyn, that's a good question. It kind of all depends on on uh, what the video is for too. Like if it's a client project and they maybe have um, some branding or they have assets that are cool, like maybe some cool design elements that could be going behind the clip uh, to just give it some extra flavor. And then your your landscape clip is sitting in the middle. But again, like you said, Camila, I think if you shot it in 4K, uh, if, like, it's amazing that phones can shoot 4K these days, mm -hmm. but if you shot it in 4K, you don't really need to worry about that. You can just zoom in. Um, you know to the spot you need so yeah i think uh it just kind of depends on style mm -hmm. choice really also if you're feeling super creative you can always like do two of the like just put them one on top of the other like i usually like grab yeah. this and bring it to the like right to the middle i usually calculate it actually before i do this and i put it in the middle and kind of like calculate both clips so you can see one on top and one like on the bottom which you can get really creative here yeah yeah so we're just gonna remove this yeah, and it's cool. I mean, the more you see people posting natively nine by sixteen, uh, the more people have to get creative with, you know, maybe you're repurposing older shots that were shot in sixteen by nine. But mm -hmm. so many people pick the camera up now and immediately turn it <laughs> vertically to shoot a video vertically. Um, and I'm sort of the old school mindset that I'd rather punch into it and have the landscape version for YouTube and for a film. Um, mm -hmm. then just shoot it natively vertically, unless the client has specifically asked for that. Yeah. So. You know, I usually like for this video, I wanted to do like the same thing, but in Spanish for YouTube. So I'd shoot everything twice, mm. everything I have like landscape and also vertical. And when I'm talking, I have like vertical me talking in English and like landscape talking in Spanish. Spanish was really hard. Cause mm. like when you have your phone like that, you cannot pretend you're on FaceTime. So. I know. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk here. Let's see what I say and then we'll keep, we can keep going. Now I'm going to an elevator park thing that I saw on TikTok. And I think that if it's cute and like comfortable, I think I might stay there to read right here. Okay, so I got to the park. I think I have, uh, oh yeah, while I was getting there, I walked through this like seaport place oh, that was yeah. so pretty. I want to show that as well. So South, South Street you. Seaport, such a cool place. Yeah, I've never been there, but it's so pretty. It like, feels like Europe. It's so pretty. Okay, so this. So tell me, what do you like better? And maybe the public can also answer this. Do you like the modern buildings, like the blue, like glass, super new buildings better? Or do you like these old ones that have been like built before? The, I, I mean, I personally like the old ones. I think they mm -hmm. have a lot more character to them. Um, but it's kind of cool to see the juxtaposition between that composition. You have those newer built, that newer building behind it. And mm -hmm. then you have the, uh, you know, you have that nice brick building in front of it. And those, that little area of the city is really cool. It does, it probably does feel a little bit like England. Mm -hmm. I've never been to England, but I'll, I can trust you on that one. But uh, yeah, it's so pretty, the buildings. Yeah, it is a beautiful spot. Mm hmm yeah so cool and let's see we'll keep let's see okay so i think i have one more i wanted to make it look like cool so i filmed this thing here oh that's cool yeah, i thought it was pretty same thing here we're gonna make them the so what is, do you know which one is better? Like, should I do set to frame or scale to frame? Because I uh, feel like they both do the same thing. Yeah, I've never really figured out 
if they're any different, um, mm -hmm. set to frame, it, it kind of depends. Like sometimes if I'm shooting 4k landscape and I set to frame, it, it leaves these like little bars along the tops because it's slightly wider. So it's like 45% mm -hmm. instead of 50, but when I scale it, it scales it to the exact frame size. But with this clip, either one, whatever is a, a quick and easy mm -hmm. shortcut. And there's probably a way to, to add a little keyboard shortcut if you were using this a lot to, to set stuff. So um, I'm not totally sure if there's a difference. Okay. So yeah, because I didn't know either. I think I did a tutorial on that and someone mentioned like, you shouldn't do that because you lose quality. But I forgot. I really forgot. Hmm. But I wish I could tell you. Okay. So here I think I go to the park and read. That was our sponsor just outside. popped up if anyone's our watching. Sponsor, yeah. Harry Potter. It's almost six now. <laughs> It got a little bit colder, stayed here. Okay, so that's me after I stay there. So I think I want to just show this part where I talk and I'm really happy. Um, and then I'm gonna, I have a little bit of footage of the elevator park. And then I have a long video of me reading. So I wanted to make that like uh, really fast, uh, a time-lapse. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So we got to the elevated park. We don't need to show that, I think. I thought it was closed at first. So I was like, oh my God, this place is closed, but it wasn't. And I saw people filming. And I guess that's like one thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing social media video editing. You're gonna film a lot, but a lot is gonna just not go in. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. that's how it is. Um, I you think have to really decide. I think, yeah, I think that's a, a really good point. I think it's important to just even for like, again, just for a vlog like this, and this is something that I try to think about um, and I've tried to think about over time is you mentioned planning, you mentioned just being a planner and like at least deciding, okay, I'm going out and I'm going to these places, but trying to think also about like, okay, the style of the framing that you want to feel maybe consistent with other shots or, or if you feel like you want whip pans and stuff like, being conscious about making sure you plan those as you go. And so I end up shooting a lot of stuff that I don't use, but I try to consolidate the stuff that I use that feels consistent with each other mm -hmm. um, yes. in terms of the style you're going for, so. Yeah, exactly. So here I'm showing a little bit of the park. I, I thought it was really cool because it's like, in, but it's so, I want to show more of that. And I'm talking, but I don't think I'll talk on the video just for time's sake, as always. Mm, okay. So what do I, what am I doing here? Let's see. And I think that because it's not rendered, it's kind of like you can see it's kind of choppy, but it's right. it's it's good. Don't worry about that. Okay. So I think that was good. I don't think it's too bad. I don't think I'm gonna show that. Maybe we can show the view because it's really pretty. Oh, I don't. I don't. I didn't film it well, so. I don't. So that's a view now facing. Scroll back a little bit. Is that a view facing back towards Manhattan now? Actually, I'm in Manhattan. I'm like right downtown. So this oh, is gotcha. facing. I think Brooklyn. No. Oh. What is in front of like uh, downtown? Are you facing? Like, you're not facing Jersey there. That or Queens? Mm -hmm. It's not Jersey. No, Queens is more up there. It's maybe th that island, Staten Island. No, oh, that's, Staten. Yeah, maybe it's Staten Island. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. Like it, you should go to everywhere I went on this video. Yeah, I and definitely like, want to. And there's like helicopter, like thing here. You see, but not using that. Okay, so this is where I start reading. I think that's a four-minute video. We're gonna make it really like long. So I need to fix my posture. That's something to work on, actually. I really like the way those clouds are moving too behind you. Oh yeah, I didn't realize. So then I'm like, do the awkward thing where I like go to the camera and turn it off. Um, okay, so. So for this, I guess we can do some keyframes for like, the, for the um, velocity. That's how you say that? Um, yep. Speed. Yeah, speed, speed, velocity. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple questions from Voodoo Val. Thank you, Voodoo Val, for your always uh, amazing questions. Uh, what happens to all the footage you don't use? Do you keep that all? Do you trash it? 
use it in the future. Yeah, I usually try to like keep everything just in case I need it for the future. Like sometimes I have really cool shots that I when I use for other videos, sometimes I do some like short videos on my Instagram kind of showing my life. Yeah, uh, like really fast, uh, kind of like trends, to be honest, nothing like crazy. But I use them like I always keep them for that. But it's I always try to keep everything, to be honest. That's my case. I don't know about you, but I keep everything I do. Like even like the smallest, like randomest picture, I'll keep it in case I need it, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm the same way. I like do it. I do a house cleaning every like five mm -hmm. years of getting rid of my stuff, but I call them, I call them scraps. Like I keep, I keep the scraps around because I never know, you know, and I, I find that I'm constantly going back for travel videos that we have. I'm going back and repurposing clips that I didn't think I would use. Um, and I use them as, you know, in different contexts. So I think, yeah. uh, you can, there's obviously clips I'll go through where I'm like, okay, that's trash. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'm not going to use that at all, but that one could, could work somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have uh, your other question, Val, about tips for not shooting too much footage. Um, my tip on that is just uh, practicing and shooting a lot of footage for a while to know what you absolutely have to shoot and what you don't need to shoot. I think, um, again, like we've been talking about, that comes with practice. Um, I found that years ago when I first started, like I overshot a lot because I was maybe a little self-conscious of the skill that I possessed to, mm -hmm. oh, I don't think I nailed it. So I'm going to get like 10 different angles. Um, and now I think I, I know what I'm looking for. And if I don't find that, then I tend to not shoot it, um, because it just takes up hard drive space. But I think it's important to, like you said, Camila, when you're starting out to just shoot, shoot everything, shoot it all because it does help. Yeah. That was going to be my, 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 um, trick tip for should not shooting i would just say just shoot as much as you need to and yeah. then you can always erase it after but i think it's better to like be oh i have more footage instead of like have a lack of footage and then you don't have enough and that's i think that's worse yeah but yeah. i guess with experience you can get better and not do that as often okay so i'm gonna do a time um <clears throat> keyframe here so to access this i'm just gonna show you with this video you go right click on this FX here and then time remapping speed. So the line is gonna move here. I'm not using this, so I'm using this one here. And this is how I do uh, keyframes. Uh, I don't think I have done this in a while. So you can help me along sure. the way. Sure. So put command and your your mouse thing is gonna change to this. Drag a, drag a point and then I you drag this to like yeah, and then this one I want it to be faster, so I put it up, right? Yeah, it's yep. moving, maybe like up to 200%. Might be overdoing it. Yeah, but that's not enough. 200%. Even that, like, still have pretty long videos, so we're gonna just cut that short. I would actually pull it up even... Higher? Yeah, like I would even, because it's, how long is your clip? It's like pretty long. I think this is three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So there, so there's a, there's a little technique or a trick, which you may know. Mm -hmm. And I, again, this is, this is absolutely the way that I would do this. Um, so I think you're, you're spot on with that, but there's a trick where rather than speed remapping or time remapping this mm -hmm. specific clip, let's say this clip is three minutes and you have a three or four second window that you mm -hmm. want to fit it in. You can actually, um, right click the whole clip and pull up the speed window. So speed duration mm -hmm. and where it says duration, you can actually change the duration of the clip to whatever time you need. So let's say, so change it just for the sake of this one, change it to 30 seconds. Okay. So zero and then 30. And what premiere will do is it will adjust the speed to fit that 30 second window. So now that clip is now 30 seconds and it's 250%. Um, oh, I see. So, see what I mean? So like, then you can decide. So sometimes mm. if you want it to be three seconds, it may be like 1200 speed, but then you fit that entire sequence in that time. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's, that, that's really cool. Yeah. I usually, I, that, that works. And I think that's really cool. Also, you can always reverse the speed on that same place where we did that. And I think that's too long though still. So we're just gonna. I think I'm going to cut this because I'm looking at the camera and we don't want me to look at the camera. Um, yep. And 
And one thing I do, I, this is not the best option, but it's also an option. If you press R, you're going to get this thing and then you can adjust your clip. Mm. And that also, see, like 600%. Yeah, yeah. So that also works. I think it's not the best. Yeah. But that, like, yeah. there's so many ways to like do time here. That's a, that's another great point. Yeah, I think I think all those tools, Camila, mm -hmm. like every every tool does, or these sort of tools do the same thing, but some work in different situations. And I think that's a really great option as well. Yeah, no, totally. So I think I'm gonna put this like shorter, maybe like. Yeah, so like five seconds. Do you think that it's gonna look choppy though? Or is it gonna look cool? Um, Let's I don't check. know, Let's try it and yeah. see. Yeah, so like a thousand percent. I Maybe think, once I, this render is gonna look cool, and I like yeah. how this looks, even like yeah. this. Yeah, because there's movement to it. I think with a time lapse like that, you have the clouds moving, yeah. your body's moving. You know, there's some action. So it, I think the more that moves in those time lapses, it's really, really works out. Yeah, definitely. So we'll keep it like that. Thank you. And so here I was reading Harry Potter again. <laughs> For really time, sponsor the sponsor, yeah. man. I like not that J.K. Rowling needs any more any more money, but hey, just, you know, come on over. Here's a little uh, Adobe Live sponsorship for you. They should pay us. I know, I know. Okay, so I kind of wanted to show this really fast. Yeah, that's cool. I thought it was cool. As and you're then, putting that in there, Camila, I just want to mm -hmm. uh, let everyone know in the chat, we have about an hour left uh, and you keep on cranking away. You're, you're doing a great job. Um, but for those that are just joining us, are uh, hopping in here a little bit late. Uh, make sure to head over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. That is where we are right now. Leave your questions, come join all the fun, uh, fun we're having over here for creating TikTok videos in Premiere Pro here with uh, Camila Santan Santander, right? Santander. Did I get that? Santander. Oh yeah, that, that's good enough. Yeah, it's okay, oh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> you really um, are. <laughs> so we have another hour left and we will be back again tomorrow. Uh, so please make sure to you know hop on over Leave us those questions. Um, we're having a great time here, and uh, Camila is working through uh, her edit right now. So, a little yes. update. Okay, so I think I talk here, and this is where I debate going back to the dumplings. We can watch this together. So, it's almost six now. It got a little bit colder. I stayed here to read for a while. I'm still at the park, and I'm really debating of whether I should go back to the dumpling place to eat dumplings again, the same thing <laughs> that I got for lunch. I decided to go back to the dumplings place to eat. <laughs> so literally I'm like, okay, I decided to go back to the dumplings place. But in between that, I remember I went to the Oculus to use the bathroom and to charge my phone. So we can show a little bit of that. Yeah, Oculus is cool too. Yeah, it's so pretty. And, but yeah, so I'm a simple person. I like Harry Potter and dumplings. Honestly, it. that that should that's what else do you really need in a yeah. <laughs> New York City dumplings and Harry Potter? That sounds like a perfect day. It was a perfect day, honestly. I really enjoyed that day. So, and I had dumplings twice, which made me so happy. <laughs> and I was trying to like be different. I was like, should I get something else? I was like, nah, it's my day. I can do it if I want to. <laughs> You're like, Maybe I'm giving like... myself permission here. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, you know cool. when you're with people, like I love hanging out with friends, but when you're with people, you have to consider everyone. You're like, yeah. what do you want? What do you want? But when you're by yourself, you can do stuff like this, get dumplings twice. I have to tell Harry my Potter. I have to tell my wife you said that because we both are obsessed with uh, we lived in Los Angeles for about six mm -hmm. years and we had some of the best dumplings we've ever had. And we've been to this place with a couple of our friends and we've had a great time and but we were just talking about going back to LA for like a long weekend. And I'm like, oh my God, we have to get these dumplings. And she's like, yeah, but we can't have any of our friends. We have to just do it discreetly because we need to order <laughs> everything we want to order without anyone telling us what to get. So definitely, really yeah. That. You have to send me the place where you go in LA. It's it's called, um, it's called Din Tai Fung. Din is, tai. Uh, yeah, so if you're ever out there, it's, it's amazing. There's a few of them. Okay, I'll check it out if I ever go to LA. I'll order everything like you guys. But yeah, I, I agree. When you're with people, it doesn't work like that. So I think I'm talking here. Let's see what I'm saying. I'm coming here to the mall just to use the bathroom. 
<laughs> so I really wanted to let people know that I was going to use the bathroom. I don't know if it's necessary, so we're just gonna cut that. But I think I really like this clip. Like, mm. there's this part where you can see both the uh, Freedom Towel and the mall, and it looks so pretty, like lined mm. up like that. So yeah, that's cool. I really like that. I like the bus going through. Yeah, it's a good. That's a really nice composition. Did I and did I mess up the bus? Did no, I, I like it? I like the I like that the bus is going by kind of on the on the mm -hmm. bottom there. Actually, I think that's a good time to like show more more um, shortcuts here. I think. Let me see. I have. You know what I did? So if you're learning Premiere Pro, I did this. I cut all my short like my keyboards. I read and I wrote them down. And then like that helps me a lot because sometimes you forget there's like things to do everything here um so yeah if you put y on your keyboard you're gonna get this and then if you move this why well, we don't we don't want all of them actually we just want to select this one if you move this you can see where your clip's starting and where it's gonna end mm. so if you want to go like back or forth like i really want to show the bus here because you motivated mm. me to show the bus like, see, now I know the bus is going to be there before. Like, if I don't want to show the bus, I could put it, like, to the beginning before the bus comes. But you just have to move this left and right. That's a good if point, you... too. So I th really like that um, shortcut or, like, tool. It's really useful. So you don't have to go back to your clip and then, right. like, see what you need. You can yeah. just cut it there. Like, sometimes you have just that specific, like, time as well. And you just want to use that so that also helps um i love just seeing the you know like even just in a snapshot of what you shot here you know you look at the the amount of different style buildings that are in new york and the history behind them and i think that's mm -hmm. what makes it so interesting to to film even on a cell phone just the everything kind of looks appealing and uh minus the garbage on the sidewalk but other <laughs> than that <laughs> oh my god the garbage is part of the city that's part of it um, Richard, you? Richard was asking about where the Din Tai Fung place was. Uh, Richard, in LA, it's in Century City. There's a, there's one in the Century City Mall, or I think right off of Santa Monica Boulevard. If you're in LA, and I'm I'm not sure where the other one is. Voodoo Val, maybe you can help me out on that one. But um, yeah, and there's one in Seattle too. Plus, there's I'm sure a lot of other good dumpling places other than just Din Tai Fung. But you like that one. That's your favorite. That's my that's my jam right there. That's that's yes. the one I think about when I go to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one the, the one place you go without friends. Yeah. I like fly out to LA for a weekend, yeah. don't tell anybody. And they're like, Were you here? I'm like, I just stayed in no. Din Tai Fung the whole weekend and do anything else. Honestly, I would do that with some places. Yep. Just go stay there, eat. Now, so you you said that you ended up in New York City because you're Grad, you went to grad school in the city, right? Or did you move to New York after graduate school? So it's a long story. I'll tell it really fast. I finished undergrad and I was thinking about going to LA actually, because my brother used to live there. Okay. And then my parents, they were living in Budapest, but then they moved to New York City. And then I was like, I mean, I should move with them. Like they, my parents are really cool. And they, I was like, when else am I going to have the chance to be with them? Because after New York, they're going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm going to move with them again. So I think I, I actually think like after the, um, a year now, like I think I'm going to move with my boyfriend. So I was cool. like, I really want to enjoy my parents. Oh, I love and that. also I wanted to, I was like LA, live by myself and see my brother or New York, live with my parents and like also do grad school. So I was like, Very cool. both were good options. And I decided to come here. But honestly, I would have not moved here if it wasn't because of my parents. I would have maybe stayed in Tampa or moved to LA. I never really had that calling to live in New York. Mm. And I think like it really surprised me how cool it is because I never thought like, oh, I really would love to go live in New York. Like never, never it crossed my mind to like live here. But I love it. Now I, I don't want to leave. Yeah, it, it mm -hmm. has that it has that effect certainly. And yes. and uh yeah, that's a that's a really cool story, and you must be pretty close with your parents then to to voluntarily want to live with them after school. Well, I don't pay rent too, so <laughs> hey, that that's that's, hey, that's a sweet little fun. part of the deal too. Yes, and no, yeah, I'm super close. They're like really cool parents, to be honest. I'm really grateful. So that's great. That is so cool. Yes, and okay, 
so now I think this is my on my way to the dumpling place again. This is for the um, third yes. time now here to the dumpling For the place. second time, for the <laughs> second time. So here is me talking about deciding to go back to the dumpling place. I decided to go back to the dumpling place to eat. I thought that would, that would be a cool like way to honor myself because that's what I really want. <laughs> Dumplings, I don't really want to try something else. So that's what I'm doing. Yes, so I'm going back to the dumplings place. I think like we're starting to see a pattern. It's like me talking and then going to that place. And it really, that's what I'm doing again. So I'm just gonna show more of New York while I walk there. So, and I'm pretty sure at the end, we're gonna have to cut the video a little bit more to make it shorter. Cause it really is starting to you know, walk this building. Mm. That's the most New York thing ever. Just like, <laughs> here's the pizza big. place. Like it's on a it's on a uh, scaffolding building. Yeah, pizza, and it's super big, super obvious. There's nothing else, just pizza. Have you seen this building? It has uh, no windows. No. Oh, I've heard of that building. Yeah, it's That's, like such a weird wow. building. It looks like someone's like like Thor's fist or something. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was like a jail the first time I saw it. So weird. But then I thought like that's so inhumane for a jail. Yeah, yeah. Even even prisons have some small windows, but they're small, but they're there. Yeah. That's cool. I like that motorcycle, so we're gonna keep it. Yeah, mo having movement in it is nice, especially if you're mm -hmm. planning on just things being, you know, these static Still, handheld yeah. handheld shots. Okay, so. I don't love this, so we're gonna skip it. Let's do the rule of threes here. Yeah. One, two, three. There you go. Mm -hmm. That was cool. There you go. <laughs> okay, so more buildings. What is that? Is that me talking? Okay, yes. But I think it's the same video we have here. Looks like some sort of, what building is, that looks cool. Yeah, right? Like such a cool building. I'm, I'm glad I had. Okay. I think you I think you mentioned this earlier or like just as I, as I'm watching you kind of scroll through clips, I just wanted to, you know, add some two cents of like mm -hmm. length of clips when you're shooting them too, which it seems like you did a really good job of, but for those that are just, you know, starting out doing this, um I feel like it's easy to uh stop recording when you think you've gotten enough uh sometimes like your clip is too short and there's been so many times in an edit where I've gotten into Premiere and realized, oh, I just, if this clip was only two seconds longer, you can always speed up your clip. Uh, it, but if you shot it in, you know, 24 frames or 30 frames, slowing it down is going to make it choppy. And so giving yourself a little extra that you can actually trim, you know, mm -hmm. buying, ex buying extra groceries. So you have some leftovers rather than having to go back out to the store. Yes is the way I try to try to approach shooting some of these things. Definitely. Yes, I think it's better to have more than to have less. Yep. Um, got another question from Mervin. Thank you for the questions, Mervin. Uh, can we freeze frame in Premiere? Yes, you can. Um, would you like to show us how to do that, Camila? Yes, for sure. So let's try to do it here. Let's see. No, um, let's do it here on this bike footage. I thought it was kind of cool. Yes, so maybe we have to choose where you want to freeze it first. There you go. Let's see, we want the guy right in the middle. There you go. We want to freeze it here. Right click, yes, insert frame hold. And it's going to do this thing, which is this is kind of like just a picture, but if you play it, or if it wasn't choppy, but see, it's there. Boom. Caught yes. red-handed. Mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere, buddy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got you can... on camera. Never mind. You can keep going. So, yes, that's how you do it. Insert frame hold segment. Cool. And you can get really creative with this. I it, I think this is one of my favorite effects here. Effects. What, what is this called? Yeah, it is, it's, it's really very useful um, for many reasons for... Mm -hmm. I think like freeze frames can be used if you're, you know, if you need to extend something, let's say you're using it as a background, you're yeah. going into like a title sequence or some sort of transition period, or you want to grab a thumbnail for a YouTube video, you don't have a photo, like there's a lot of yeah. good cases for it. So 
Yeah, also I like when they match it to the music. Like, yep. And then you stop. Um, I don't think I talk in between me leaving, like that's my last scene. And then here's me like on this bin, you can see me getting the food and going to another place to get boba and then go eat. So I don't think I talk, so I'm just gonna put like snippets of everything I'm doing. And... Yeah, see, like, there, see how happy I am with my dumplings. That is a happy, that's a happy camper right there. Yeah. <laughs> dumplings, they really make everything better. <laughs> yeah, this place is cool. So I came to eat here. I like that sign. Any designers in the room? That's kind of a cool little, cool little design. Yeah. Also, you you told me you were starting to well, not starting. That's what I made up. I made that up. Um, you are. You do After Effects. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I um I, uh, about four years ago, I worked as a in-house video producer for Verizon, and I did mm -hmm. a lot of their. I did all their shooting and editing, and I started sort of animating things as well, like for some of their commercial work. So mm -hmm. I had to sort of teach myself. But um, the last week, I was I was working on a client uh, project for this this documentary, and so my my head has been focused on After Effects, which is great. So it was a nice it was a nice reprieve from After Effects uh, mm -hmm. to see you in premiere today, but. Um, there are, there are some wonderful ways that Premiere and After Effects just work, work together, together yes. uh, which I think is really nice. And, and, uh, the machine that I'm using to stream here, um, can thankfully handle some larger files in After Effects mm -hmm. finally. But like we were talking about before, the tools I used to have could not do that, but you still learn on them and you just, you realize your limitations and you just get better and better. So exactly. That's oh, so cool. Smart. You know, I really want to, I think I'm going to put that first just to show where I am. Well, I mean, where I'm going, because that's where I was going to. I filmed that when I was exiting, so it's darker, but I think because it's inside, you can't really see that this is like, right. if it's day or night outside, and I really want to show where I am first. Yeah. That's really that, cool. I love though. that blue hour too, that blue hour. Right? Lights. Like with yeah. the contrast with the red, so pretty. Yeah. Um, I want to learn After Effects. I really want to get into that. It's, uh, there's, I mean, I like, I would hard, I would call myself sort of like more of like an intermediate animator. Like I can, I can do okay, but mm -hmm. I'm certainly not, there's, you can just learn so, so much in there and it can get a little overwhelming. But again, I think just starting and opening it up and I started with just, you know, kinetic like typography and trying to find ways to make the videos that I was creating feel, stand out a little more, feel mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, like make a cool title or make a cool transition element. And then you you catch the bug and you're like, oh, I did this mm -hmm. cool, I made this thing move from like here to here. And uh, and it just unravels from there, but it's a, it's a great program. Yes, it really is. And you've got me just so excited. I really, maybe after this, I'm gonna start working on learning it because it's so useful too. Very I have much. so many people who want just uh, animation, and I'm like, sorry, I can't do that, which sucks. Do you, um, uh, Voodoo Val had a, a good question. I was actually curious as well. You know, in for you learning After Effects, what kind of projects um, would you maybe see using them for, or or maybe like a client's asked you something that, like you just mentioned, but what would be some cases you'd use After Effects for? That's a really good question. I think that most of my clients because i do social media video editing they sometimes do want intros or outros or like for youtube they want uh, things popping up here and things coming from this side but not like things i can do in premiere things that i need after effects for so i think that just for clients but also kind of like to step up my content it would be cool to like one teach like i do with premiere but yeah. also uh maybe in the future we'll see but also to when I do my YouTube videos, sometimes you have these crazy ideas, but you can't really do them because you have the limitations of not knowing how to use After Effects. So I think that also for that would be really cool to have those. Uh, so I guess for personal reasons, but also for work, because it, it I think like knowing After Effects is such a good, um, such is really good. Like people who do animation, I think they, they do really well. In life. Yeah, it's it's uh I had to 
I had to hire a lot of animators mm -hmm. uh, when I was when I was producing, and uh, this was you know a lot of them were out of the scope of what I could realistically do in a time that some of these animators could do. And yeah, the animators are in high demand, and, and they charge uh, a premium because it takes a long time to to get to a certain point. And I think what's so cool about animation too is that it encompasses a lot. You know, you have designers oh. involved, or you have someone designing assets, but uh, on a small scale, like on a beginner scale, it is really great just to learn how to, you know, animate text and animate lines and shapes and yeah. things that just add a little extra, exactly. so, extra sauce to, to what you're creating. Mm -hmm, so it's definitely. Cool. And also like if I'm doing video editing, might as well like do it completely. I know everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is me saying bye. It was really funny. My phone was like on like 5%, but I was still like recording because I wanted to get materials, but I couldn't get in the bus without my phone because I needed to pay with my phone. So that's me talking. I'm waiting for my bus to get here. But I only have 5% of batteries. So I think I will stop recording at least I, until I get to the bus, inside the bus, because that's how I pay to go in the bus. I made it to the bus. Today, it was a successful day by myself. I really need to do this more often. Thanks for coming with me. So I think it's like I wasn't talking too loud on the bus, so I can't really hear myself. But okay, so my idea is I could go back to this later and kind of make it shorter, but we can start adding titles now. Because cool. I had an idea, yeah, because that would take a while and we've been, yeah, you know, you like... About, you got about 20, you got like th a little less than 30 hour. minutes left, yeah. so you should be good. We can always continue this one tomorrow and then sure. start on the last one, on the other one. You know, when I had my content call, uh, I was told that it would take longer than expected. And I was like, well, I am a fast editor, so I think I need more, like, but I'm realizing now that it does take longer than expected. It does well because I think the I think the format of these Adobe Lives uh, is supposed to be a bit you know of uh, we're obviously here to watch you edit and create this project but learn about you and, and learn about your process and those are things <laughs> that when you're really in an editing hole no one's no one's sitting mm -hmm, on the other end no asking you a million questions so yes but I, I enjoy this this is fun yeah so I got this thing online this cool uh, like a little ge like a little geo tag yes exactly so we're gonna do that for every place I have my notes so we're just gonna make this smaller and go maybe here that's a little bit big right yeah okay so i i have a question uh, for now for the public and maybe they can answer me and then we can decide sure. i have two pop sounds it's like the most <laughs> random question but I want to see which one's better. Okay. I have one pop and then the other one. So when that thing appears, I want it to be like, doop, like boop, you know? So let's see. So let's let's see. call okay. one. We'll call pop one and pop two. So we have blop and pop, apparently. <laughs> blop and pop, okay. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I, I have this, like, I've had this so sounds for a while when I started doing this. So sometimes the names are a little bit um, I, improvised, I, wonder if, I would say. I wonder if, I, well, and did you source these from... Um, where did you pull the sound effects from? Oof, it's been so long, I honestly don't remember, but I think it was like free sound library something. It's like gotcha. online, yeah. They're like, they have a bunch of like random sounds, like typewriter, like someone sneezing, you find everything there. And they were like, some of them are free. Cool. Okay, so this is one. Okay, so Ooh. you could see both actually. There's like two, two, but this is one. And this is the other one. So we like A or B. Uh, oh yeah. So A or B. We got blop or pop. A <laughs> is blop and B is, is pop. Or or the other way around. But A or B. I. We can, we can just put it A or B. A. I'm kind of digging A. B. I like A. I like sounds, A too. Sounds a little more like fun, cartoony. I mm -hmm. think the higher pitch uh, gives it something. And um, yeah, I'm I'm digging A. Okay. So I think we should. We can start doing this and then we can add the sound once we get a little bit more feedback if, if we get any. Okay, so this thing here, I'm gonna... I should write the text and then I'm gonna copy and paste it to everywhere else. So, captions and graphics. 
I was so confused last week or two weeks ago when Premiere did this update because I didn't know where all of my panels went. I was like, oh, this is a new layout. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now getting used to it again, but it's that first time when shock. you're it's like shock. I'm like, nope, nope, can't happen. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is nice. This works. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny for me too because I updated my app and I was like, did they remove the panels? Like, why would they do that? Like, do they like, were not, they not yeah. useful? Like I made this whole story in my I head. know. And then I, I just found that I was like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. I feel like that's how I feel about every Apple iOS update. Oh I, like, get, I get used to it after a week, but I'm just like visibly mad for the first mm -hmm. two days. I don't know why. <laughs> it's nice to be like comfortable, right? Like yeah. that's the whole theme of now. Like we like things as they are. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to make this icon a little smaller and we're going to put, put it lower. So on TikTok, you can see like there's always stuff up here and there's always stuff down here right, and right. on the right side. So we want to put it lower just in case there's something like messing up with the screen. We want people to be able to read the places like appear on the screen. So always do, keep that in mind. Do you have a um, do you have any sort of template that you use as like an overlay? So you know exactly when you're creating these for TikTok that you're not going to lose any of the text on the top and bottom or do you just now know by by posting kind of where that text lives i don't have an overlay and i think that's actually something i should do like maybe just lower the opacity of like a screenshot or something because that would be really helpful and i know when you edit on tiktok it shows you like it shows you which parts you shouldn't be editing on but i don't but i maybe should i really should do I you? wonder, no, I actually was, was wondering that too. Um, you can, I think you can create one pretty easily. And if not, like, I'm sure you could find them, uh, online, but I don't know if premiere, if those in the chat that are moderators are listening, um, premiere, you know, has title safe, which they've had forever. Uh, but a lot of that title safe, those bars are really like kind of outdated because a lot of those borders were for, um, broadcast. So that text wouldn't get cut off there. But I wonder if there'd be a way to, in Premiere updates, make sure that there's title safe bars for TikTok and Instagram Reels now because so many people are creating those. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just flip on a button and turn it on and off. Um, and again, that might exist already. If, if someone in the chat knows, tell me I'm wrong, but um, that might be a good idea to have. Yes, it would be definitely very useful. Okay, so I like that text like that. But this is dumpling house. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Let's see how it looks. Do you like that? I think it, it looks a little bit overwhelming, but I think when it moves, it's not too bad. Yeah, we'll keep that. Okay, so the next place is Pier 35. So that's the pier I went to. That's also a place I wanted to show on my like as a place that i've been I, that I just got to yes so when you copy and paste if i paste here see like it i used to struggle with this so much when i started using mm. premiere because yeah. it would be like why why is this this why is this happening yeah so just make sure you change this how wh what are this called like the tracks make sure you have another track selected there you go yeah, there's a couple ways to do that. That's one way, which is like the most standard way where you could lock mm -hmm. the track below it mm. or lock the tracks. So like whatever track you don't want to add on to, they just lock it and then it just stays there. I do that with like an audio track that I've locked in because if I end up moving it and I'm timing stuff to my audio, mm -hmm. it, no matter what, it always happens. So I just lock some of that stuff, which does help. Okay, so locking also works. That's a good tip thing. Um... Pier 35, good, we're here. Then same thing, we have that copied and the next place I wanted to take you to Seaport District, New York City. Let's go there on my video. Okay, so that's a lot of walking, that's a lot of talking. I look like such a mom here, I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, like selfie. <laughs> and then I thought of my mom, I was like, that's how she, she takes pictures. <laughs> Um, and where are your parents, where are your parents from? 
They're both from Bolivia as well. Oh, okay. Yes, so we're all Bolivian. Have and you? So did did they? Uh, I I've never been, and I've wanted to. I've certainly wanted mm -hmm. to go um, really, really badly, but we, uh, my bucket list just never ends. So <laughs> I feel that. Oh my god. But you were you were about to ask something. Um, did they move to Budapest? It, it, like, did your parents have a job there? Or they just picked Budapest because it's awesome. Uh, no, actually, we moved. The first time we exited Bolivia, we moved to Panama for my dad's job. So every where every place I've been to is because of his job. Oh, cool. And in Budapest, I didn't really leave there. That was like my home while I was in college. Mm. Yes. So, and after now they have been relocated to New York City. And when I finished their mission here, I think they might move somewhere else. Very cool. Yeah, and I think it's really cool too. And I also like that motivates me to like live in different places. Oh, shoot. I'm opening something that I should not be showing. Okay. <laughs> You'll we'll ignore that happened. Don't look at the uh, passwords on the screen. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So. Yeah, that's okay. that's so cool that uh, you had the opportunity to live in different places, and I, I'm a big, big advocate of that, and a big, big believer in, mm -hmm. in in when you can, if possible, really try to travel and, and get out yes. there. And so, so it's great that you had so many experiences. Yeah, I'm so grateful. Like, it's so nice to live in, and more than live, just like visit and like learn about this all these new cultures and people yeah and i think that also reflects on like always my friends are very diverse in different ways and that's just how i live my life very open to different people i love that and that's how yeah. everyone should be right i i absolutely agree and i think uh traveling and meeting other people and and hearing different cultures and stories like i think that's the the purest form of education i really mm -hmm. do and and uh, it's something that i try to try to do every day you know meet meet different yes. people and, and just speak to all walks of life because amazing mm -hmm. it certainly educates you yes okay so we're here yes so i'm just changing the names of all the places i've been to Same thing. So a lot of copy pasting that we're doing here. So the next one is the Oculus Center. I did this little note that you can see, like I was so ready for this. You're, yeah, and, you're, it's perfect. <laughs> even the address. I mean, I, I don't know if I should add the addresses or not. What do you think? Um, I like to do, this is just a stylistic choice. I mm -hmm. like to actually put the, I don't put the address, but I put the like latitude and longitude coordinates. So I'll do those underneath a title. So let's say you have the place and then like maybe in a different line weight or a different mm -hmm. font, you put the coordinates because it doesn't take up as much room and it's a little more like subtle. But if someone really wanted to look it up, they would just type it or they take those coordinates and plug them in. That's really cool. I never even thought of that, but that's, that's amazing. So that, that could be kind of a cool thing, but I think what you have now is looking, is looking great. So that's, Again, totally a style choice mm -hmm. of however you. But I think it looks it. cool there. Yeah, like it, it it tends to. I don't know. It like, I it just feels a little more like ooh, mysterious, even uh -huh, though there's like, like professional, of, like yeah, artistic. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So maybe I should get those and add them later. So I'm gonna post this video. I think. Well, I'm definitely gonna post it on TikTok, so you'll see if I do that when I awesome. post it. Yes. Well, I will come check that out. Um, we are on TikTok as well, so I'll have to come give you a follow. Yes. And I saw that you had Twitter, but I didn't have that to add. So maybe I should get on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, Twitter. I have like a, I've been finally getting like interested in Twitter now that Instagram has turned their focus more to just mm -hmm. video, um, mm -hmm. which I both love and hate. I'm a photographer as well. so. Instagram has been a home for me for a long time for our business. And so Twitter has now sort of become the place where I can share more of my photography work mm -hmm. um, in the like NFT space and things like that. So uh, it's just, I you can't keep up with all of the platforms. You just Definitely. have to <laughs> like use what works. And really for me, it's it's YouTube um, and yeah. Instagram. Uh, yeah, I think that I have a lot of friends who are photographers who have been transferring to Twitter because of Instagram and they're all like how they work now. Yeah, but, it's, it's crazy. 
I used to like it for like news and to see what people were saying. Yeah, it, it's almost turned into more of a photo sharing. I mean, people are mm -hmm. still expressing themselves the same way, but I think it's cool. It's like the feed feels a lot more like Instagram used to feel like. Yeah, and okay. Now Instagram feels like what TikTok was and <laughs> is, and TikTok's still TikTok. So there's just, mm -hmm. they can't figure it out. Yeah, you can never win. Like it's always changing. You can't, you can't. Okay. I, think the, I think the biggest thing you can do, and like I try to give myself advice like this and hear from other people is like not to get discouraged by the platforms changing and just continue to be true and authentic to what it is that you want to create mm -hmm. and tell and just look at it as like, okay, great. There's another avenue for me to share my work. Mm -hmm. Like adapt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cause there's always ways to grow. And I guess like TikTok, I think like so many people were reluctant at first, like, oh, I don't want to get into TikTok. It's like for kids, but clearly like it gives you great opportunities. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you can never really disregard um, a platform if you don't really know the potential yet. Agreed. Okay, so did we get any feedback on the boop and blop? Yeah, it seems like we actually had about three or four A's. So okay. blop, we got A, 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 and we got one B. Um, so I'm sorry, Jeet, but it looks like A maybe out one B. We got two. We got two Bs, so it was a close contest. But I think A still won. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both voted for A as well. So yeah, we have the majority voting for A. So I think, like you said, we're gonna block this, like you taught me, and we're gonna add it to the beginning of each um, time thing here. So let's see. I always struggle with this. Like, when should that pop? So let's see if it works on my video. Is that good? Or should yeah. I, mm, should I show a little bit? I think that that's a little bit rough. Maybe like put it here and then this here, like. That, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a better option mm -hmm. because the pop, people are gonna associate the pop with the clip. With the clip, yeah. But you want it to be associated with the text. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do that with all the texts and this one here. That's, ah, there you go. You yeah, right? there, yeah, there you go. I like that. So what type of YouTube videos do you do? Uh, travel. Uh, we, my wife and I, uh, lived in a van for about two years. So Amazing. We, uh, we have a bit of like a van life saga. So mm -hmm. our YouTube is leave the map. Um, that's our, that's our business. And, uh, so, but since we, we bought a house last year and since doing that, I've almost like morphed it more into a little bit more like home design style mm -hmm. and travel. Um, and yeah, you should, uh, check it out. There's, there's some different, will, definitely. different videos in there and trips and, um, stuff from Iceland and, Scotland and kind of all mm -hmm. over the world. So, so cool. And congrats on getting the house. Thank you. Big thing. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work. It, uh, we love it, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's been, it's been quite the journey. Yeah, of course. It must be like so much work, but also so rewarding to like finally do it. It, yeah, and settle it, and like have a place to be at that is your home after a van life. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. I mean, we were in LA for about six years and did a, you know the apartment life and bounced around there a while and then mm -hmm. right right from LA we we um, ended up buying a van. We actually for our honeymoon rented a van and we traveled in a van for fourteen days and that's sort of when we got the we caught the bug and we were both uh, already freelancing and and working for ourselves. But mm -hmm. I was still working full time, so we just had to say, okay, when is the time when we pull the cord and actually go do this? You know full time and and uh, that was scary but it was very rewarding and yeah of course and amazing so that was about four years wow. ago now wow that's so cool and i mean i feel like you have more experience and more of like uh a lot more life wisdom but i would love to have some van life somewhere in my life there Ish, that's uh, like my dream to be living in a van but also i don't know i need someone to go with me it does. <laughs> it certainly helps to have a, have somebody, a buddy, just because yeah. there's, there's reasons, you know, share, share in the drive and, and the responsibilities, but I yeah. encourage anybody if they're interested or, or 
have a desire to do it, even just for a little bit, you know, with a friend, like it's yeah. just, it sort of opens up your eyes to uh, the freedom that exists. But also I think the misconception is that a lot of people that are living these lives, you know, aren't, they're away from the corporate thing or they're not working, but mm -hmm. they may be working twice as hard because they're trying to yes. sustain a lifestyle that's a little different. So it's mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah, so amazing. I'll convince someone to do it, like at least for a little bit, even yeah. like you said, it doesn't have to yeah. be like for long term, but yeah. I think it's such a cool experience. Um, but okay, so uh, I think, sorry, you were saying. You just, I just want to, I don't want to cut you off, but you have about 10 minutes left mm -hmm. here, Camila. So whatever okay. you don't finish, we can certainly get into tomorrow. But again, uh, thank you, Voodoo Val, for the reminder. For those in the chat, 10 minutes, 10 minutes and counting. Any other questions, leave them in the chat. And again, we will be back tomorrow as well. So, yes. okay, perfect. So I think just for time's sake, I'm not going to cut this uh, down because I don't want to um, just take some time. I'm just going to do that by myself later, but we can go into sound music and all that. Usually cool. I think I would just add something from TikTok, but because we're here and we're doing this, we can browse some music. So we have different, uh, I think this is music from um i think it's from epidemic Fund epidemic songs? yeah yes yeah, so we'll see what they have they have some cool stuff i was looking at so moose i thought this was a really happy relaxing eh, sexy definitely not um dreamy no emotional Let's see festive, what, no. i kind of like I, I like happy or groovy i feel like okay it could, could be a little bit of a groovy day i could say that yeah definitely and for this, I don't really know much of music genre, to be honest. I'm like, for me, everything is like music. So we'll skip that. And yeah, I think here you can actually put which one oh, into cool. music. That's cool, really cool. cool. So if you have like, if you pay for mm -hmm. any subscriptions, you can make sure your audio is coming from that. I didn't know that that part exists. I always thought it was just Epidemic, but that's cool that they have other mm -hmm. partners as well. So very, yes. very neat. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And tempo and duration we don't need them really so let's see what they have corporate definitely not no. let's see let's you can already know on. what that's gonna sound like yeah like, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's always so corporate -y. like there's a specific thing that makes it so corporate there but, it is yeah look like, yeah. you can already hear it in your head oh my god i did so many corporate videos like i'm it's like ingrained in my brain so mm -hmm. i just never again never again traumatized right happy inspirational corporate okay sorry mm, okay nostalgic nah inspiring let's see so i just finished work Ooh, what happened i want to play this so i just finished what is happening yeah what is that what's going on there we're gonna need to play like finished working maybe oh. just oh oh it's because it's it's yeah, uh, it's I'll... actually playing it's just not um coming I'll in No. Definitely not. <laughs> yes. Do you have any good recommendations here? Let's see. Uh, go up to moods again and let's see genres because maybe we'll be able to um, get a little more. Let's see. So no dance, no country. Um, what kind of music are you into? Like what, what gets you gets you motivated or gets you going for a video like this? Are you, I, I guess indie music. Okay. So maybe we try um, mm. some of if you toil down like uh acoustic does it give you other options of acoustic so like that little carrot you there really, let's let's hear this one <gasps> that's so yeah. cute maybe that could work that's cute that's very like um happy God, what's, yeah what's the yeah exactly what's the movie there's like a oh my god there's so many movies with that ukulele in it but <laughs> i can't think of what i'm supposed to say right now but Let's see. Um, sorry, Val. I'm just seeing your question about the van um, and Jeet. Thank you for the thank you for the uh, follow on our YouTube channel. Appreciate that. Um, I uh, yeah. The uh, Voodoo Val was asking um, if living in the van influenced my work. Like, how did it influence it? And if I had my creativity breathed more from starting that adventure. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, going back to what we were talking about before, I certainly think. Um, being in new places every day, every week, open 
uh, your creativity a ton and allow you to, I think sometimes it's easy to get stuck in a rut and mm -hmm. when you're not around other places or other people, your, you know, inspiration maybe falls behind. So I, that was one of the reasons why we chose to do that. And I think, uh, we're, we're actually leaving on Friday or Saturday for a th uh, month long trip in the van again. So the van is still with us, it's still in the driveway. And uh, I'm very excited because I feel like it's opening up those creative juices again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see how like when you travel around in a van, like there's so much that you can talk about. Just oh, yeah. van life, traveling, like finance, everything, survival, yeah. uh, kinda, relationship kinda too. Like how right. does your relationship like gets affected by that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So cool. Okay, so I learned this not too long ago that you grabbed this and you made that. That's my dialogue. I did that before because my sound was not it. But now we have this, which are my effects here. So they should be selected. Yes, they're really small, really, really small. But there you go. Yeah, so that's my SFX. And I like to match the loudness. I feel like I honestly don't know what it does, but I feel it does something good. So I always do that. And same with music. That's my music. Same thing here, out to match. And then I would like to maybe automate some keyframes, some ducking. So it's louder when I'm not talking, you know how it goes. Yep, yep. So let's do that. And then maybe, I think we're good on time to finish doing that. Yeah, you got about four minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll stop you and let you know when we're wrapping up. Yes. Oh, this was good timing though. We're almost all like yeah. done. We just need did, color and that's about it. You did great. You planned it out perfectly. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. Uh, okay, so ducking, ducking against, can I do it against two things like SF, oh yeah. I think you can, yeah. Let's see, okay, sensitivity, I like to put it high because I feel it works better. Duck amount, I sh it should know what it's doing, but I guess I'm going to put a little bit more. Fades, I like them faster because I think there's a lot of like back and forth. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so I think it's doing its thing, right? It's a cool, a really cool feature in this, uh, in the essential yes. sound panel. Yeah, when did they do that? Like that's, that must be really hard to program. Yeah, uh, that's, cause that was like most of the time done pretty manually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see if it looks cool. If not, we can, I can go back and redo it until it's perfect, but let's. I might just pretend I'm on FaceTime, we'll see. <laughs> so I just got my food. I'm gonna go to the pier to eat. Okay, so I think that some parts are a little bit aggressive, like this. Like, it's like, you're not talking, so I'm gonna come here. Right. So I can edit those myself yep. later. Yep. That's nothing crazy, and I will make this shorter so it fits three minutes that is always such a struggle i feel like making something smaller is so hard like if i could have a long video that's an easy edit but like just shrinking things down it that's really where is. the struggle comes but i'll do that and then tomorrow we can finish with the color and do the nighttime routine so it, awesome. i think it's a good like day and then night like nice little transition there I love it. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. I love the, I love that last little part with the ducking too, because it at least gives you a head start of, you know, most of that, uh, works with the way you want it. And I find yes. that sometimes with like dialogue, I just pull the whole, I pull the whole track down at that point and then bring it back up. And so you can, you can just continue to tweak that. And, uh, I think you did an awesome job today. It was, Thank it was really you. great to just see a day in the life of, of you in New York. It was, it was really, really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting this. This was really fun and cool. And I really enjoy editing. Um, well, I guess in front of people, I was very anxious. Like I told you before, like this, like I had nightmares that this went wrong. Oh, like no. every day I would have like this really bad nightmares. I was like, I'm late. The oh, no. I'm working on everything. 
but now that it's we're here i feel like so much well, better and so much confident and really good. happy so grateful thank good. you so much for having me oh absolutely me. well you killed it thank you camila and thank, thank you. you for everyone that joined us today in the chat uh, a few things as we wrap up here again like we mentioned we will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m pacific time for part two of editing tiktoks in premiere pro so stay tuned for the creative encore of the premiere creative challenge with fabiola lara immediately following this stream uh, she is incredible so please make sure to check that out, uh, followed by a new episode of Power Prompts with Cody Bear. Um, so this week's prompt is Pirates. Uh, I am definitely going to check that out because I love me some pirates. Uh, and Adobe Live will be back tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time with an Adobe Express stream to start your morning. Uh, tune in with Andrew Hockrottle on Adobe Live as he uses the app to make custom thank you cards for your teacher uh, in honor of something that got cut off from my, <laughs> it's maybe teacher appreciation week is what I'm going to guess. Um, so thank you everybody again uh, for day one. Again, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, we will see everyone tomorrow. Camila, see you tomorrow. Thank Bye. you guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>